Hi, this is your writer's coach, Teresa Funk, and I'm back with more suggestions on how to keep your career moving forward and how to keep you on track with your writing. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is about individual writing retreats and whether or not I recommend them. I actually do recommend them because now we are busier and more distracted than we have ever been, thanks to things like email and social media and our increased demands at our work. And so I really recommend that if you possibly can, you get away and do some writing on your own. Now, if all you can afford to do is get away for one day, that's better than nothing. If you're busy with your life and your work and your family, at least go for one day. But take that day to leave and go someplace different than your usual writing environment, especially if you write at home. Go to a coffee shop or a library and devote several hours to your writing with no distractions. But I really recommend if you can get away, that what you do is go for at least a weekend, and here's why. Because when you go for a weekend, you're going to fall into your natural writing rhythm. If you're a morning person, you're going to rise extra early and get a lot of your focused writing done first thing in the morning without fear of disturbing anyone. If you're a night person, you're going to write well into the night, waking up at 10 or 11 the next morning without concern that anyone's going to judge how late you woke up. So you're going to fall into your natural writing rhythms and you're going to get your best work done. Now for me, I like to go for about five days, and I know some writers who go for writing retreats for as long as two weeks and can accomplish quite a bit. So it completely depends on what you're able to do. Now the second thing you need to think about when you're planning your writing retreat is where you want to go. Again, I recommend that you go away from your usual environment for two reasons. One, it heightens the sense, senses and raises your awareness of what's around you. And two, it gets you away from those daily distractions. So if you have a friend who can loan you a cabin, great. If not, offer to house sit for somebody who's going on vacation. You can also look at a cheap resort or a hotel. And think about going during the off season. A lot of people think of their writing retreats as needing to take place during the summer or fall. But actually, if you go up during the winter, you're going to get a much better rate. And the weather's going to be so crappy outside that all you're going to want to do is turn on the fireplace and sit down and get your work done. I've actually gotten some of my best writing done during winter retreats when I'm not distracted by what's going on in the outside world. Now the next question you're going to ask is, with whom should I do this retreat? Well, I really recommend, if possible, that you go by yourself. You're going to get the most work done and the most concentrated time to think if you're alone. Now I know it can sound intimidating to think about being alone for five days by yourself, but you're not really alone. You've got your characters to keep you company. And you can always call somebody later in the day for some interaction with a live person. But you are going to find that you're going to get much more work done if you can go and focus and again slip into that natural rhythm that is your style. Now if you're the type of person who has trouble self-motivating or you're concerned about being by yourself, take along one writing buddy. But if you do that, make sure that you're going together so that you can motivate each other and keep each other on track. Not to be distractions for each other. So you'll want to set some solid rules like we're both going to write all morning and we'll come together in the afternoon for lunch or for a walk to talk about our work and how things are going. Now, there are writers retreats that are sponsored by groups or organizations and you might want to go on one of those, particularly if you're at the early stage in your career or if you're thinking about writing something but aren't sure you want to start on that project. In other words, you're looking for motivation and camaraderie and being around fellow writers. Because a lot of times those organized retreats have writing prompts and exercises that will get you started thinking. And they're going to give you time to hear other people's work and time to write on your own. So an organized retreat can work well, but if you're really heavily into a project, choose time away by yourself instead. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how to make those retreats work best for you. Now let's talk for a minute about how to structure your retreat. Well, the first question to ask is when you should go. You should go when you're the most excited and motivated to get some work done and to focus on your writing. A lot of writers think, oh, I'm going to take a writer's retreat and I'm going to go lock myself up in a cabin and it's going to force me to write. Or it's going to give me the time to think of what it is I want to write about. And rarely do those retreats work out very well because you wind up feeling discouraged or frustrated and you start looking for distractions to take your time away from your writing. It's better to go when you're feeling motivated or excited about an idea and you're actively working on it. So the next question becomes, how far along are you in your project? If you're further along, 
you might want to set some goals for your writing retreat. So maybe it's a word count or a page count or a certain number of chapters that you want to achieve while you're up there to keep you motivated and keep you moving forward. But if you're at the very beginning of your project, that can also be a good time to go on a writing retreat. In fact, I recommend that people think about going up before they've even started writing their story, particularly if you're working on certain types of books. So let's say you're working on historical fiction or nonfiction, and you've got a ton of research you just need to figure out what to do with. Well, you go up on your writing retreat and you lay all that research out on the paper, I mean on the table, and then you think about how you want to organize it. You start plotting, you start outlining, you start looking for commonalities and themes in the research. Now when you come back to your daily writing routine, you have a place to start because you've organized all that research. If you're writing memoir, you may like to take a weekend retreat to go up and just jot down every memory you can think of with no judgment about whether or not that's a good memory or whether or not it's going to make it into the final book. You just let your mind flow and you get all those thoughts out on paper. If you're writing something like sci-fi or fantasy, an early retreat can be very beneficial because it gives you a chance to work on your world building. You need to understand before you start writing your book what that world looks like and sounds like and smells like how your characters move around in that world, what kind of technology is in your sci-fi novel, what kind of magic is in your fantasy novel, and what's the history behind them. Once you feel comfortable in your world, you're going to better be able to move your characters around within them. You might also want to take the time in the beginning of a novel to use a, a writing retreat to think about your characters and to brainstorm which characters you want. So don't feel like you can only take a retreat when you're a certain distance along in your writing. Sometimes it can be very helpful to go early on. Now, if you can go as often as you can, that's even better. A lot of people think, oh, I get to go on this writing retreat, it's a one-time thing, this is going to be great. Go as often as you can and get the work done. You might want to go in the early stage and do some planning, then you write for a while at home. When you get stuck or you get to a place where you've got some great inspiration going, you go up and you do another writing retreat. So don't feel like it's a one-time thing. Make this part of your routine as a writer. Now that you're on your retreat, let's talk about how you can best structure your day to get the most out of your writing retreat. Now the first thing you want to remember is this is your time, as I mentioned, which means there's nobody watching, nobody judging, there's no expectations on you. You can choose to set your day however you want. Think about the daily routines that you do every day and throw them out the window. If you're the type of woman who always puts on a lot of makeup and fixes her hair in the morning, skip it. There's no one to see you anyway. If you're the type of person who always goes for a jog first thing in the morning, try skipping that jog one morning. One day is not going to hurt, but what you might find is an interesting flow that comes from getting down those first morning thoughts onto paper. Take long showers. We're so busy at home that we often don't have time to take time for ourselves. But I know a lot of writers who have told me that their best ideas have come in the shower. So take long showers and give yourself the freedom to let your mind roam. Now the second thing you want to remember is not to turn on your computer first thing in the morning and check your email or your Facebook because you'll just get sucked into the distractions that those things bring with them. What you want to do instead is kind of set yourself a writing goal and when you've achieved that goal then you can check your email or your Facebook. Remember if you have the type of job where you're required to check in on email even if you wait till 2 o'clock in the afternoon you're going to have some concentrated work time and nothing's going to happen in those few hours that's going to throw everything off. Now think too about where you're staying. Try to choose a place that doesn't have a television or a pool or things that are going to distract you. But if you do choose those places, again, use the pool as like a reward. If you've done a lot of good writing that day, you can go take a dip in the pool later as your reward. If you're going to watch TV, think about watching a movie instead. And pick a movie that is going to keep you in your focused mind frame. So I tend to write about World War II. So I'll take up movies with me about World War II or that were filmed in the 1940s to kind of keep me in that zone. Same thing goes with the novel that you take up to read. Take up a novel written in the genre that you are writing so that you stay in that zone. Now be realistic about the goals that you set. You do want to have goals, you want to make progress, but I hear people saying things to me like, I'm going to go up for two weeks and knock out my entire book. It's probably not going to happen. And plus the goal of a writer's retreat is to free your mind to allow yourself to brainstorm and imagine and explore your thinking, to try new things and fail at them, to go down a false path and come back, to write some really bad scenes just to see if you can change your voice up a bit. So don't restrict yourself too strongly with your goals to where you can't have a little bit of that creative flexibility. Now that brings us to revision. 
if you've only got a weekend away, you don't want to spend all of your time revising. You don't want to, at the end of the weekend, have accomplished one chapter that you wrote and then you rewrote it several times. Again, this is your chance to think and to brainstorm. Get down as much work as you can, knowing that you can always revise during your daily writing routine when you get home. Now that said, if you choose to come back specifically for a revision retreat, that's a good thing to do too. To go lock yourself away and go through the book from beginning to end and make sure that everything is as you want it to be. So I'm not saying not to revise at all, but I'm saying to use this time to yourself to be as creative and to be as free-flowing with your thinking as you can be. The last thing is to remember to enjoy your time. This is your time to be a writer, to be an author, to be out there exploring who you are in your art. And so what you want to do is say to the world, your husband, your spouse, your children, this is my time for me. I'm going away to write. Please respect that and don't disturb me. So tell the world that the world can wait, but your book can't. And have this time for yourself to get some really great focused writing done. And best of luck with your work.